Good morning, everyone. All right, this is the um, chapter that, uh, today that I'll be reading, um, Acts uh, chapter 15. And this is Sweet Home Heaven, and I'm Michelle. <clears throat> and um, I just want to tell you guys, I don't know if I've told you guys this or not, but, um, you know, I don't wear makeup and I don't do my hair. Um, I don't color my hair. Um, after I had um, thyroid cancer, which is the best cancer to have, if you can use all those words in one sentence. Um, <clears throat> um, and then, you know, the, the makeup. <clears throat> the reason I don't and I haven't um, is because, you know, I think we put on, like, we're born in, you know, naked, and we um, we come into this world, hair not, you know, our hair is the way it is, if, or if we don't have hair. And so these videos are really not about me. Um, these videos are about uh, God <clears throat> and <clears throat> feeding on the Word of God <clears throat> to um, so our spirit gets stronger. Um, so I just, I thought I would just, you know, I know I've said that on my other channel. Probably I need to reiterate it, but anyway. All right, you got, all right, let's, let's go ahead and begin. Today's a little longer of a chapter. <clears throat> so, get, um, you know, <clears throat> bear with me. Acts chapter 15. <clears throat> and certain men came down from Judea and taught the brethren, unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. Therefore, when Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and dispute with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain others of them should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and elders about this question. So being sent on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, describing the conversions of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy to all the brethren. And when they had come to Jerusalem, they were received by the church and the apostles and the elders, and they reported all things that God had done with them. But some of the sect of the Pharisees who believed, who believed rose up, saying, It is necessary to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. Now the apostles and the elders came together to consider this matter, and when there had been much dispute, Peter rose up and said to them, Men and brethren, you know that a good while ago God chose among us that by my mouth the Gentiles should hear the word of the, the gospel and believe. So God, who knows the heart, acknowledged them by giving them the Holy Spirit, just as he did to us, and made no distinction between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now, therefore, why do you test God by putting a yoke on the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved in the same manner as they. Then all the multitude kept silent and listened to Barnabas and Paul, declaring how many miracles and wonders God had worked through them amongst the Gentiles. And after they had become silent, Jesus answered, saying, Men and brethren, listen to me. Simon has declared how God at the first visited the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. And with, the, with, and with this, the words of the prophets agree, just as it is written. After this, I will return and, I, and will build, rebuild the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down. I will rebuild its ruins and I will set it up so that the rest of mankind may seek <clears throat> the Lord, even all the Gentiles who are called by my name, says the Lord, who does all these things. Known to God from eternity are all his works. Therefore, I judge that we should not trouble those from among the Gentiles who are turning to God, but that we write to them to abstain from things polluted by idols, from sexual immorality, from things strangled, and from, the bl and from blood. For Moses has had throughout many generations those who preach him in every city city being read in the synagogues every sabbath then it pleased the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to antioch with paul and barnabas namely judas who was also named barnabas and silas leading men among the brethren 
They wrote this letter by them, the apostles, the elders, and the brethren, to the brethren who are the Gentiles, to the Antioch, Syria, and Cilicia, C-I-L-I-C-I-A. Greetings. Since we have heard that some who went out from, from us have troubled you with words, unsettling your souls, saying, you must be circumcised and keep the law, to whom we give no such commandment. It seemed good to us, being assembled with one accord, to send chosen men to you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men who had risked their lives for the name of our, of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have therefore sent Judas and Silas, who will also report the same things by word of mouth. For it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things, that you abstain from things offered to you, <clears throat> offered to idols from blood, <clears throat> from things strangled, and from sexual <clears throat> immorality. <clears throat> if you keep yourselves from these, you will do well. Farewell. Continuing ministry in Syria. So when so when they were sent off, they came to Antioch, and then and when they had gathered the multitude together, they delivered the, le the letter. When they had read it, they rejoiced over its encouragement. Now Judas and Silas themselves, being prophets also, exhorted and strengthened the brethren with many words. And after they had stayed there for a time, they were sent back with greetings from the brethren to the apostles. However, it seemed good to Silas to remain there. Paul and Barnabas also remained in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of the Lord with many others also. Then after some days, Paul said to Barnabas, let us now go back and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how many, see how they are doing. Now Barnabas was determined to take with him John called Mark, but Paul insisted that they should not take with them the one who had departed from them in Pamphylia, I don't know how to say that, P-A-M-P-H-Y-L-I-A, -A, and had not <clears throat> gone with them to the work. Then the contention became so sharp that they parted from one another. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed to Cyprus. But Paul chose Silas and departed, departed, being commended by the brethren to the grace of God. And when he went through Syria and Cilicia, C-I-L-I-C-I-A, strengthening the churches. All right. And so, okay, for the... Um, Focus areas. Um, I got two here that I want to read. This one deals Acts chapter 15, 1 through 21. Controversy in the early church. Acts, is, Acts 15 describes a simmering controversy that finally boiled over. It was around AD 48, and Paul and Barnabas had just returned to Antioch after their first missionary journey. They reported the amazing news that God had brought Gentiles to faith in Jesus. Then men who claimed to speak for the church in Judea arrived with disturbing messages. Gentiles must become Jews in order to be saved. They must reject their own backgrounds and accept the tenets, the tenets of Jewish religion and culture. If what they said was the, the truth, then half the disciples at Antioch were not Christians. Neither were, neither were a majority of new followers in churches Paul and Barnabas had planted in Pisidia, P-I-S-I-D-I-A, and Galatia. No wonder the argument created tension and bitterness. The dispute was not quickly resolved. Paul reported that Peter went along with the false teacher, teacher's errors. Even Barnabas was swayed. The crisis grew so severe that Paul and Barnabas and others journeyed to Jerusalem for a full-blown debate in the presence of the apostles and elders. The discussion hung up on three crucial presentations. One, Peter's reminder of his meeting with Cornelius when God gave the Holy Spirit to the Gentiles. Two, Barnabas and Paul's account of their recent travels through Asia Minor, a journey in which God worked miracles among the Gentiles. And three, James' conclusion that these events correlated with the prophetic words of Amos, chapter 9, verses 11 and 12. As Paul later communicated in his letter to the Galatians, the conclusion reached was that there is no neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male or female, <clears throat> for you are all in one you are all one in Christ Jesus. Despite the fact that the young church managed to avert a split between Jewish Jewish and Gentile factions, 
issues of Acts 15 still troubles us. The ancient scene points out how difficult it is to separate our culture and worldwide and worldview from our grasp of the gospel. <clears throat> the church often finds security and familiar familiarity and excludes anyone who differs. Diversity feels uncomfortable, but Acts chapter 15 shows us how to speak up and resolve our concerns honestly and biblically. That's the key word, guys. <clears throat> we, can, we can resolve our differences <clears throat> honestly and biblical, biblically, <clears throat> not by... <clears throat> not by uh, gender pronouns, um, you know, somebody, you know, didn't get, you know, apparently they didn't get the help they needed when they were a kid or I don't know, but, uh, you know, they, they identify as this, this is, you know, it's just the absurdity has gotten out of hand. I watched a video one time <clears throat> and this woman thought she thinks she's a dog. She, she walked around on all, all her hands and her, you know, and her feet. <clears throat> I'm like, what, you know, what is happening? Then anyway, let me finish. I got one more here. <clears throat> Acts chapter 15, verse 6, faith meets culture. As the gospel expanded to the end of the earth, the first evangelists <clears throat> came across cultures that challenged what had become the conventional beliefs and practices of the Christian movement. Their findings required the church to bring together a diverse body to sort out issues of faith and culture. As we struggle to work our, out the relationship between faith and culture today, we must keep in mind that the world contains a wide variety of people who face a wide variety of circumstances and who respond to God in a wide variety of ways. Some controversies between us <clears throat> involve truth issues. Others are love issues. Some might involve both truth and love. Truth issues call for a clear understanding of scripture. Love issues require open-mindedness and tolerance. The situation in Acts 15 obliged the early church to deal with both. What, <clears throat> what issues in the modern church came down to? Truth. What circumstances demand our loving tolerance of legitimate differences of opinion and practices? What, <clears throat> what issues demand us to grow in both truth and love? <clears throat> well, when this, um, they, when they uh, did this Bible um, and, and did it from King James Version to New King James Version, I don't, you know, who could have, who would have thought, you know, we'd be in this um, odd place uh, in society. Um, but, you know, the thing is, <clears throat> you cannot, uh, you know, you, the Bible says, you can only serve one God, one God. And um, now, but we all are to work out our own salvation. <clears throat> so it's not my job to tell you which God <clears throat> you should serve. I can tell you what uh, the God of my creator of the heavens and the earth um, is Jesus Christ. And um, that, uh, you know, I hope and pray one day that you will reach out to him and um, accept the um, gift of salvation and um, understand what our father sacrificed for our for so we could have forgiveness because we sin daily. Um, and you know, it, it really, really wrap your head around um, as a parent, if somebody said to you, um, you know, listen, we need your son and he's going to, he, okay, guys, Juliet, no, no, anyway, he's going to, Juliet, he's going to die a horrible death, but we need him for all mankind. The, the, Juliet, the gift of your son <clears throat> will save many. I don't know that I could do that. Anyway, guys, have a great day. Bye-bye.